Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dr. Rama Devi, Professor and Head, Department of Anatomy, coming from Pondicherry Institute of Medical Sciences. Today, my topic for discussion is radial nerve. And before we proceed to that, let us have a case scenario. Mr. M, after a heavy bout of drinks during his bash get together, slept off in the chair with his right hand hanging loose against the chair. In the morning, he was unable to extend his wrist and fingers. On being taken to the casualty, he was diagnosed to have Saturday night palsy. Now, what is Saturday night palsy? What is the nerve involved in this condition? At what level do you think that the nerve was affected? What were the muscles affected? All this you will come to know as we finish this session and you will get an answer to all these questions. Let me repeat this. Now, what is Saturday night palsy? What is the nerve involved in this condition? At what level do you think that the nerve was affected? And what were the muscles affected? In fact, you will get an answer to all these questions by the time we finish this session. Now, the specific learning objectives for today's session is to talk about the origin and formation of radial nerve, its course and important relations, the branches given off at various levels, and applied aspects in terms of wrist drop, Saturday night paralysis, and injury to the deep branch and superficial branch of the radial nerve. So coming to talk about origin and formation, radial nerve is actually the continuation of the posterior cord and it is one of the largest branches of the brachial plexus. So before we proceed further, let us have a short introduction on brachial plexus. Brachial plexus is actually a group of nerves from the ventral rame of the spinal cord of the lower four cervical nerves, namely C5, C6, C7 and C8 and the upper or the first thoracic nerve that is T1. All of this join together in various combinations and form the upper, middle and lower trunks that is C5 and C6 join to form the upper trunk, C7 continues as the middle trunk and C8 and T1 joins to form the lower trunk. And then these trunks divide into anterior and posterior divisions meant to supply the flexor and extensor compartments of the arm. And they, uh, these divisions join to form three cords, mainly lateral, medial and posterior. The anterior division of the upper and the middle trunk joins to form the lateral cord. The anterior division of the lower trunk forms the posterior, sorry, and this has to be repeated. The anterior division of the lower trunk forms the medial cord and the posterior divisions of all the three join together to form the posterior cord. In other words, posterior cord contains elements from all the five nerves C5 to T1 and radial nerve being considered as a continuation of the posterior cord 
now carries all the fibers from, uh, from C5 to T1 and so we rightly call the root value of a radial nerve as C5 to CH and T1. Having formed in the axilla, this nerve lies in the axilla anterior to the subscapularis and tendons of teres major and latissimus dorsi which are all the muscles forming the posterior wall of the axilla and at the same time it is posterior to the third part of axillary artery and to the first part of the brachial artery as it passes on into the arm. Then when it uh, leaves the axilla, it enters into the lower triangular space with the profunda brachii artery. What is this triangular space? The muscles of the scapula form potential spaces which are classified as quadrangular space, upper triangular space and lower triangular space. The area of interest today is for us is the lower triangular space which is bounded above by the teres major muscle, medially by the long head of triceps and laterally by the shaft of the humerus. It is in this lower triangular space that the nerve emerges along with the profunda brachii artery. At that region, it lies between the long and medial heads of the triceps. Repeat one number. And on the side level. In the side level. In the side level. Now, as the nerve exits the axilla, it enters into the arm through the lower triangular space along with the profunda brachii artery. Now, what are these spaces? These are spaces are, I am repeating, these are potential spaces formed in relation to the various muscles attached to the scapula. So, we have a triangular space upper triangular space, a quadrangular space and the lower triangular space. It is the lower triangular space that is of interest today, so which is bounded above by the teres major muscle, medially by the long head of triceps and laterally by the uh, shaft of the humerus. It is into this space that the radial nerve emerges along with the profunda brachii artery. At this juncture, it lies between the long end head and medial head of the triceps. Having entered into the arm, it then proceeds along the spiral groove of the humerus where it lies in close contact to the bone and passes laterally. So, in that context, it lies even it lies along the profunda brachii and its branches and it gives uh, lies between the lateral and medial head of triceps. So, passing this way, it gives off various branches along its course and then proceeds further down piercing the lateral intermuscular septum and enters into the anterior part of the compartment. Let me repeat this. In the spiral groove, it lies along with the profunda brachii artery and between the lateral and medial heads of the triceps. Here it gives off many branches and in the spiral groove, it lies flat against the bone. So, uh, further down as it passes obliquely down, it pierces the lateral intermuscular septum and enters into the anterior compartment of the arm. So, having reached the front of the arm, just at the region um, of the anterior to the lateral condyle, it lies at the lateral aspect of the cubital fossa, where it lies between the brachialis and bra uh, brachialis on the medial side brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis on the lateral side. So, this is how we see it at the against the lateral epicondyle in the cubital fossa. So, just as it enters into the cubital fossa or in and around that region, 
he divides into his terminal branches the superficial cutaneous branch which passes into the front of the forearm and the deep branch which passes into the extensor compartment of the forearm and it is called as a posterior intraosseous nerve. So, in the front of the forearm, let us look at the fate of the cutaneous branch or the superficial branch. It lies under cover of brachioradialis for a long distance. Upper two third of it is under cover of brachioradialis. In the middle one third, it lies in relation to the radial nerve artery on its medial side. And then it further passes further down. And then at the same time, the deep branch exits this region by passing through the supinator muscle. So, the superficial branch as it further goes further down at, at about two third of the forearm, it passes laterally and posteriorly around the radial side deep to the brachioradialis tendon, pierces the deep fascia to innovate the dorsum of the hand through dorsal digital nerves, which is exclusively a sensory supply. So, the superficial branch as it continues further forward, about two third of the arm it passes under cover of brachioradialis and then under cover of the brachioradialis tendon, it passes laterally, posteriorly along the radial side deep to the tendon, pierces the deep fascia and enters into the dorsum of the hand. There it uh, supplies through the dorsal digital nerves. At this juncture, it is entirely a sensory supply. Now to talk of the branches, the sensory supply of the radial nerve at various levels, the back of the arm, it gives off the posterior cutaneous nerve of arm and lower lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Suppose which supplies the posterior aspect and as the name implies on the lower and lateral portion of the arm almost up to the level of olecranon process. In the back of the arm it gives off the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm and onto the dorsum of the hand it supplies through the dorsal digital branches. These dorsal digital branches are five in number of which they supply the proper digital nerves supply the either aspects of the thumb and the lateral aspect of the index finger. The common digital nerves supply the contiguous side of the index finger and the middle finger and the middle finger and the ring finger. So, it is entirely a sensory supply onto the dorsum of the hand and they supply sparing the, proc uh, the distal interphalangeal joints. It supplies mostly the proximal and sometimes to the level of the middle interphalangeal joints. Meanwhile, the deep branch which is considered as the continuation of the radial nerve pierces the supinator muscle and passes on to the extensor compartment or the posterior pa part of the forearm. Here it lies between the superficial and deep group of muscles and supplies all the muscles in the extensor compartment through various branches that is the three short branches which are to supply extensor digitorum longus extensor digiti minimi and extensor carpi ulnaris. It also gives off two long branches. The medial of that supplies the extensor pollicis longus and extensor indices, whereas the lateral set supplies abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. These branches also supply the articular branches to the wrist, inferior radio ulnar joint and to the intercarpal joints. There is 
a sensory supply to the interosseous membrane, radius and ulna. You can note that the end of the posterior branch ends in a pseudoganglion which supplies the intercarpal joints uh, and the ligaments. So, to summarize, the nerve by and large supplies the extensors of the arm, namely the triceps, anconius, brachialis, brachioradialis, and extensor carpi radialis longus. And it also supplies the extensors of the forearm, that is the supinator, extensor carpi radialis brevis. Abductor pollicis longus, extensor digiti minimi, extensor digitorium, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, extensor carpi ulnaris, and extensor indices. It is to be noted that the extensor carpi radialis longus is supplied even before the nerve enters into the forearm compartment, posterior aspect. The nerve also supplies the elbow joint, the wrist and intercarpal joints. That is, it gives off articular branches as it passes along its entire length. So, now to summarize the branches given off at different regions. In the axilla, it gives off the muscular branches namely the triceps long to the long head of triceps and to the medial head of triceps. It also gives off a, a cutaneous branch called as a posterior cutaneous nerve of arm. Coming on to the spiral groove, it gives off muscular as well as cutaneous branches. Muscular branches are to the long head of triceps and to the medial head of triceps. This middle, this nerve, the, the nerve to the medial head of triceps lies in close relation to the ulnar nerve and is also referred to as the ulnar collateral nerve. The nerve to the medial head passes through the muscle and thereafter supplies the anconius muscle. In the spiral groove, it also gives off cutaneous branches that is posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm which supplies the whole of the posterior aspect of the forearm until the wrist and the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. Coming on to the lower part of the arm, it gives off entirely muscular supply to brachialis, brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus. The superficial branch that is a cutaneous division supplies gives off dorsal digital branches, three digital nerves which are to the index finger and the thumb and two common digital nerves which supply to the contiguous digits of the thumb, middle finger, sorry this has to be repeated. The superficial terminal branch it is, it is entirely cutaneous, it gives off dorsal digital branches which are five in number of which three are entirely digital nerves to supply both sides of the thumb and the lateral side of the index finger. Then there are two common digital nerves which supply the contiguous side of the thumb, uh, sorry, uh, it gives off two common digital nerves which supply the contiguous side of the index and middle finger, then the middle finger and the ring finger. Coming on to the posterior interosseous nerve, it is by and large a muscular nerve or supplying only the muscles, motor nerve. So, it gives off three short branches to extensor digitorum longus, extensor digiti minimi and extensor carpi ulnaris and gives off two long branches, the medial part of which supplies the extensor pollicis longus and extensor indices. Whereas the lateral part of it supplies the abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. If 
Finally, as we told, it ends in a pseudoganglion, which supplies the carpal ligaments and the joints. Now, coming on to the different clinical aspects of radial nerve, we consider foot, a wrist drop, where all the extensors of the wrist, elbow and the fingers are paralyzed. There is an unex, uh, unopposed action of the flexors, making the wrist feel like being dropped or uh, wrist being in a flexed position. The fingers can be extended to some extent because of the coexisting action of the dorsal introsciae and the lumbricals. The patient is unable to grip the objects firmly and the sensory loss may or may not be present because of the overlapping dermatomes even though there is a certain degree of uh, sensory supply to this region. Coming on to Saturday night palsy, that was the clinical condition that we uh, discussed in the beginning. So, now you get an answer to your question. Here, the man sleeping in the armchair, the limb hanging by the side causes the uh, injury to the radial nerve in the spiral groove. Here, the nerve is very much against the uh, bone and so it affects all the nerves, all the muscles which are supplied. Very often the triceps is spared because the supply is much above um, because the long head of the triceps gets a supply even before the nerve enters the spiral groove. But most of the time the Saturday night palsy is a neuropraxia whereby there is a recovery after a certain period. Similarly, injury to a superficial branch may be uh, at the wrist may be caused by any structure that might cause an obstruction at the, uh, at the wrist level like a tight bracelet, watch strap, plaster cast or handcuffs. All this leads on to a loss of sensation in the area it supplies namely the dorsum of the hand lateral half, dorsal lateral three and a half digits up to the nail beds and absolutely there is no motor loss. Now coming on to the posterior introsious nerve or the deep branch of the radial nerve which might be injured due to various conditions like fracture of upper radius, dislocation of the head of the radius, penetrating wound of the upper forearm. All this can affect the brachioradialis, extensors of the forearm and note there may be sparing of the extensor carpi radialis longus because the supply happens at a higher level before the nerve enters the arm leading on to a loss of wrist extension with radial, radial deviation and there is absolutely no sensory loss. Thank you.